Seven density, the density of completion. Those are my words. Um, and I'm just saying that so that you're not associating this with the love one. I don't want to misrepresent. Just want you to be clear, this is my presentation. The law of foreverness. The intention of the six going into seven density is becoming the totality, the creator which knows itself as all that is. I usually call this I, I. So we have the, we have the I am this, and the most identified state as the person in third density, I am this, I am this body, this mind, this personality in this big bad universe, and I need to make sure that I have health insurance and that my tax system and all this stuff. That's I am this. It's identification with I am this. When we begin to grow up, we begin to tune into I am. There's a lot of the mindfulness and sort of power of now kind of teachings are about getting familiar with the field of presence, the I am. I am. Oh, wait a second. Oh, I can have thoughts about this and that, but I can also let them go for a second and just experience the presence that's here to now. Right? That's the I am. It's not essentially different from the I, I, or the God's I am, only in that I am still has location to it. I, I has no location, no space, no time. It is literally the light of everything. So, main learn teaching of seven density is surrendering of individuation, dissolving the unified self, the I am that has resolved itself, that's no longer at war with itself, that understands itself, and dissolving that I am into the creator as all that is, the universal I am. Or I. The main means are self-transcending desire to merge with the entire creation or creator. Holistic exhaustion of identification with an individual self. Imagine not only on a personal level being ready to let go of your memories, but as a soul. Drop individuation. Your whole journey, you've completed it in a way as an individual. As far as you can go as an individual is I am, but completely holistically resolved. All vibrations back into the I am. One knows itself completely, transparently, fully. One sees the unity in all things, but still one is located as Ra, or Bentinho, or you. Can you then give up? What's the end of the soul's journey look like? There is an end to the soul, because there's a beginning to the soul. There's no end to the creator, because there's no beginning to the creator. So at some point, the soul merges back into the creator. You become the creator. Six going into seven density, sub-lessons. Learn to intuit the mind-body-spirit complex totality, the over-soul or higher self's higher self, dissolving the unified self, the I am, in the all, the I, I, the I without the M here. It's the I before I am. It's whatever that mysterious isness or beingness is. One surrenders to that. Free of all traces of individuality and space, time, location. Letting go of any and all personal and individual-based interests. Realizing that the individual portions of the creation do not need you anymore. Vice versa. Losing all identification with location or having a center. Imagine not having any sense of center, location. Then identity dissolves. You merge with the isness of all that is. Losing all identification with location or having a center. I said that. Blending with becoming the allness. Ending the tendency to look backwards towards creation's individuation, individuated portions or the lower densities. The common challenges or attachments to sixth density vibrations to transcend let go of the freedom that one has still in sixth density to guide individual thought. Therefore, to teach or learn portions of the creation that are of a lower density than late sixth density. In one transmission Aaron described, which is part of the LNL research, the same people or organization that channel Ra, one of them described something along the lines of a lot of entities maintain themselves in a late sixth density state. Almost, and this is my analogy, but almost like not getting sucked into the allness and like just like standing at that doorpost, like not yet, not yet. They're holding themselves at a late sixth density state because they then still have the capacity for individuated thought. Therefore, the capacity to teach individuality itself, being able to let go of the unified self, of memory, the world of form, creation, diversity, and individuation. Sounds scary to a third density mind. Sounds delicious to some. Re reality. So I don't really call this a density, but to continue the system is referred to as eighth density. Um, but really, eighth density, in a way, you can almost liken onto a gap between densities, between octaves of seven densities, seven densities, seven densities, seven densities. Now, Lavon does describe that the later portions of eighth density 
are again emerging as a new creation, therefore forming the first density of the new octave. But you could see the first portion of eighth density as kind of the absence of all densities. It's the reset button. It's the creator before even it became free will, love, and light. Before it had any substratum, couldn't, it couldn't handle eight density. Yeah, it's, got, it's reset. This is a new octave of the iMac. So, again, the first minute, this is the unmanifest, or it's the reality. As soon as it begins to create, it forms free will, love, and light. Seven density is kind of one with the three distortions. Because seven density is the allness. It's becoming all that is. And one does that by becoming the substratum of all form. The substratum, the primary ingredients of all form, is awareness, love, light. In India, they have a different interpretation of this. They call it Satchidananda, or existence, consciousness, bliss. It's kind of similar. So the seven density entity merges with the substratum, now only sees and becomes the substratum, only sees awareness, love, light. And in that process, therefore, becomes the essence of all that is, because everything literally is made of awareness, love, light. If you become the three primary distortions, if you become the substratum, the essence of all of manifestation, of all of the grand illusion, you become that essence so through and through, then you literally become all that is in that way. You become the essence of all that is, which is still not the one. It's still not the original. It's reality. This is not real. That's reality. And if you ever have a chance to penetrate into that level, it'll blow everything else out of the water, you'll know what's real and what's not real. And it's like for the rest of your life, if you still choose to be here, it's like there's this gaping black hole in the sky and you can't get rid of it. And it's just constantly, you're transparent to the one. So I don't really describe it as a density, but sometimes I say it's, seventh, it's eighth density. So this is the law of absoluteness. Again, these terms are not from the law of one. These are what I came up with because quite frankly, there's a description uh, lacking about seventh, but especially eighth density, it's, it's almost missing. So I've called it the density of infinity, governed by the law of absoluteness, or the law of just absolute. The intention is the graduation from creation, not an individual graduating inside of creation. Now one has become the substratum in seventh density. The intention is to graduate from creation. So one now becomes creation. The individual now equals. Now creation is ready to completely finalize its mission, which was to be a mirror for the one, to know itself, remember? It needed reflective material. And the illusion of evolution, the illusion of creation, was the reflective material the one needed to know itself. Now in contrast to the pure isness, love, light, awareness of creation, as this one giant perfected mirror, one can begin to wake up to being beyond awareness, being beyond love, being beyond light, being beyond isness, being beyond beingness. The one is free of beingness, even. Beingness is one of the first manifestations. Awareness, love, light generates beingness, or is beingness. So the intention is the graduation from creation, realizing the one and only infinite reality. Now, when you go through the black hole, or as Ra describes it, I think, again, paraphrasing, when the seventh density has accumulated enough spiritual mass, when it's become enough of itself as all that is, only awareness, love, isness, now it's, it gets so heavy, spiritual mass. It gets so heavy that it collapses under its own weight back into the void. Hence the black hole, that's the symbol that we can see in third density with our physical eyes. It's the black hole. What's on the other side of the black hole? Reality. It's also here, but we don't see it because we're in a bubble of creation looking through the senses at it as if we are the senses looking at it. But actually we are what's beyond the black hole. And this creation is like a speck of dust on an infinite of reality. So a main learned teaching is realizing creation's existence is unreal. So everything you've ever experienced for billions of years, now you've got to say, oh, wait a second, none of that was real. Are you willing to do that? Are you ready to do that? Well, at this stage, you'll have to be, if you want to graduate. You are beyond all that is, quite the statement. Seventh, going into eighth density, sublessons. Recognize that there is a source, absoluteness, beyond all creations or octaves, like a timeless infinity of perfect no-thingness, that resides as the only reality, hosting islands of illusions or creations within its infinite capacity. Well, the few times that I've gone completely through the black hole exclusively, meaning with not a trace of creation, I saw, if you would, it's hard to describe because you're not really experiencing there. It's beyond the normal means of experiencing. It's beyond consciousness. 
Literally, consciousness is the substratum of creation, but you go beyond consciousness. But there is a comprehension there that, that cannot be defined by the words of awareness or consciousness or attention. But there's comprehension. It's the closest I can get. There's just infinite instant comprehension. I started knowing things I should have no knowledge of. I could see islands of, islands of creations, so entire creations, as tiny little, tiny little snow globes in the distance, just dancing into infinite ones of them, in a sense. So this is like the center point in between all octaves, if you will, all creations. And we're just perceiving through one creation right now. Challenges or attachments to transcend when letting go of seven density vibrations. <laughs> uh, this may not be relevant uh, for most of us for quite some time, but here we go. So first we try to achieve beingness or allness or isness, right? And now we have to let go of it. It's like, what? So the challenge is to let go of is beingness. It's like we, the, the main attachment, the main identity, God's, Ego is I am as well. It knows itself as I am, as I exist, as I. So to let go of that I, that sense of being, is, is, is the final, ultimate step. Letting go of identity itself, same thing. God, love, light, free will. In the absolute, you transcend all free will. But trust me, you won't want any. There's no need for it. It's an infinite, indescribable perfection that absolutely makes this different. Creation illusion as a whole, letting go of creation or illusion or playing with it. Awareness, letting go of awareness or experiencing. But it's not really that you, that you, it's not that you don't exist anymore. It's, in fact, it's like you exist for the first time ever. You actually know yourself. The creator knows itself using the reflective means of creation. Uh, but you don't, you let go of the normal means that you know of experiencing experiences. It's no longer relevant. So the first time I, be, I began to drop into this, um, and I'd been practicing quite intensely to be one with the field of awareness itself, to recognize pure awareness itself beyond the mind. This is all beyond the mind. None of this is conceptual. Past fourth density, none of it is conceptual. After having done that for a few years and already taught it for three years or so, just sort of the direct means to awareness, at some point the sense of beingness itself, which I was teaching about, began to feel heavy. Like literally, like there's something not right about isness. There's something not right about consciousness, isness, beingness. Suddenly it became a burden rather than a liberation. It used to be a liberation. Liberation from the mind into the field of presence and beingness and pure isness. And then increasing your brightness of that isness and experiencing the light of it. And at some point that became a burden. I didn't want to be anymore. It just very naturally wasn't a mental process. I just felt like ugh, something is done being. There's something beyond being. Something beyond beingness. And that started to open up to me. And it was like, suddenly there was this, this gaping hole in the floor, the substratum of beingness, into this infinite sense of absoluteness together. And again, this is just a snapshot. It's just one way of describing it. Yeah, this is some of the stuff that I teach, although I try to avoid teaching it. Usually I don't teach it because it's too, it's too intense and it deshuffles the uh, mind-body-spirit complex if the mind-body-spirit complex is not ready for it.